So what's this this crazy eye chart we have here? So trying to come up with a cartoon architecture that describes the different standards that we've been working on here at OMG. And before you get too nervous, we do uh, describe what all these acronyms mean on the following slide. So yes, there is a definition of the acronyms. So just kind of go with it for me. It's fine. Um, yes. Yes. Just oh. don't ask us to pass the test. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this picture represents, so this is a, a notional platform. So a military speed platform is, is any vehicle entity or location where stuff is deployed. So don't think of platform as the cloud or whatever. We happen to use a ship. It could, it could be a tank. It could be an aircraft. It could be anything. But just for the sake of this argument, we use a ship as the platform. Um, so we've got different standards that are kind of platform centric in the defense military domain. So we've got one that's a command and control interface for navigation systems. So uh, helps you talk to and from nav sensors, nav systems from the combat management systems perspective. There's uh, sensor related standards. There's open architecture radar interface standard. And they're actually looking to extend that to more than just radars, but all of your sensors that go out into the wild and detect things that are going on. So now with inside of the platform, usually there's a part of the platform where you have a bunch of operators who are matching buttons and operating the system and, and combating threats. So we've got several standards that are related to people that work. So on a ship, you call it the CIC, the Combat Information Center. So there's a tactical decision aids interface that is going on in there. So it helps a standardized way to uh, talk with and work with those. TCI is taxit controller. So in a combat system, your operators are often looking at a geospatial picture of where they are, where all their friends are, and where all the bad guys are. So we call, in the US Navy, we call that the taxit. So that's why you see the T taxit. So taxi control interfaces is how do your systems make that picture work? Um, text is taxi data exchange. So um, making sure all of the components in your system are sharing the same picture. And if I need to share that picture with others, um, make sure everything is data is exchanged properly among those taxi pictures. And one of our very first successful standards uh, is alert management services. So Almas, I don't know how our British friends got us to, you know, use that name, but we'll blame Alan Minister for the name of that spec, Almas. But uh, <laughs> that's been very successful. So I'm going to hand over to Mike, and he's going to talk about how some of these other standards actually work off for the platform. There's, there's not a whole lot of them. Uh, all that stuff is met, and then I do this one little box up here called IEF. IEF is the Information Exchange Framework. It's a, uh, right now there's a reference architecture for a set of services that allow you to securely share information with partners. It's policy driven and data centric. So we're wrapping policies and services around data. Okay. Uh, it's going through a refresh because we've been doing testing of uh, implementations of that set of standards. Well, that standard, that reference architecture within NATO for the last four or five years. We've learned a whole bunch of things. One is that IEF never mentioned the term data centric security, but it was all about data centric security. So we basically went into that. Um, data centric security is zero trust by its very nature. You turn data into a resource and offer it up and do all the access controls to that data. Uh, zero trust just says every transaction is man, uh, controlled and audited and logged and all the other stuff. Well, it was talking about that. So now we're saying, how does the IEFRA relate to data centric security and zero trust? And oh, by the way, everybody wants to deploy it to the cloud. How do we deploy this stuff to the cloud? Well, it was already a set of containerizable services or virtualized services that we could put out into the cloud. We just never mentioned them because when we started this, nobody was talking about it, so we didn't put it in. So version two, and there's a number of uh, different configurations going through. The IEPPV is the Information Exchange Packaging Policy Vocabulary. It's a, a policy language 
tied to architecture. So we have a UML profile for it as well, that I can in define all my data exchange policies within the context of my enterprise architecture. So here's all the rules for exchanging data with each of my partners. And then it's tied to things like UAF and through that, through uh, DODAF and NAF. And as now I can say which policies are applied on which interfaces used with which partners on which systems within which missions and operations. So now I can start looking at doing a whole bunch of log auditing of the environment itself. Primarily, it's to say that we really have to understand the content of the data we share with partners and how we apply rules to that content. So on Wednesday afternoon, we have the IEF uh, working group. I'm happy to go into details. They didn't give me any slides to talk about it. <laughs> you didn't give me any slides. So. <laughs> they wouldn't let me put it out. I'm Canadian. Um, <laughs> No, they want any Canadian involvement in this, but basically it's just a way of architecting your involvement. It's iterative in nature. I can deploy the policies as I discover them. I don't know, have to know everything at once. And for most organizations, that's really good because they don't know their own data very well. How it applies to DevSecOps is we're doing DevOps with relation to policy. So I can deploy my services and do DevOps with policy out to those services. So if I have to, I have a new mission partner, a new operation, a new task force I'm working in. I can deploy the policies to the ship without carrying a big hunk of hardware with me to reconfigure my security. Okay, so we're trying to iterate on the policy and the software itself. So each services is through a DevOps program, DevSecOps program, and basically now the policies would go into their own lifecycle. In, under the control of the business, the operators, whoever has to deal with that. More on Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> oh, and it's in, we work with Mars because they actually issue our standards because it's a middleware platform type stuff, but it started out in C4I and it has a major military implication. So closing out the rest of this eye chart here. So I got a whole stack of other important relevant things that we care about in our defense military domain. I, I probably missed some, but I'll kind of go through the list. So DDS, Data Distribution Service, this is used on very, very many. I should put Corba in here too, Bill. You should have beat me up on that. Corba should be on here. Um, it should. It's in every okay. I just, yeah, it's Corba. Corba's been all picture, 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 if you will, Corba right here. Um, DDS. Uh, UAF, which is Unified Architecture Framework, which is UML, SysML, DoDev, and everything else on steroids. Don't um, get NAV. Hmm? NATO has to go in there now. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. NATO. Yeah. Yeah. We work with NATO. Oh. Uh, test IF is a standard uh, that we actually pushed through C4I several years ago, which is a test uh, information exchange framework. So it's building off of the ideas in REC IF, which is actually a standard that's been in place for a long time for the exchange of requirements information. Uh, there's an application instrumentation standard out there that's very useful. Um, uh, we're working on a face profile for UAF, so future airborne capability environment. So any of you guys face folks. Um, and then obviously DevSecOps is really important to our domain. And then there's also DDS monitoring service uh, that we're working to standardize. How do you know that your DDS system is doing what it was supposed to do independent of that DDS system telling you that it's okay? Um, so that's the concept there. Um, yeah, just trust, just trust, it's fine. Um, so here's, I told you we did elaborate the acronyms. Um, so there you are. So we'll get back to the conversation.